Hi, I'm Edie Lewis, and welcome back to my channel for another review. Not Nocturnal this time, but still we have another gothic review. So, um, before we get started, please f follow me on Instagram and Twitter, as well as Goodreads, Wattpad, and BookBub. You can find out what I'm up to, and you can read some of my readings. If you're interested in my novel, The Curse of Ridge House, it is available on Amazon in both paperback and Kindle. Um, the links for all those things are down below. And please visit my Facebook page, uh, the official Facebook page for my novel, The Curse of Ridge House. And please hit, a, hit like on that page. Before we get started started, I'm also going to talk about this. This is up for pre-order right now. Um, this is a horror anthology from other kind of put together uh, from other booktubers, you know, uh, horror tube and author tube. Uh, it was put together by Regina's Haunted Library, and it has several contributions. Uh, one from me, and it is a fantastic horror anthology, and it comes out October first. It is. The Kindle edition is up for pre-order right now, and it costs $3.99, so please check that out. Please pre-order that. Please get your copy. And all the proceeds go to charity. I do believe the charity is called First Read. I'll have um, the link to the launch video, which is on Regina's Haunted Library. <clears throat> and also, I will have a link to the book itself, to the pre-order, all in the... Um, description so it's trying to spare on me so please check it out it's called local haunts and it is a fantastic collection from some really great author tube and book tube writers so check it out and pre-order today so today's review I'm going to be talking about the book Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House as well as the film adaptations, mostly the 1963 version. I read this during my summer reading, which I know it's still summer, but still. I'm already working on my Halloween reading because um, I don't know how much time I'd have for reading in October, so I started it last month. And I'm on book three of my uh, TBR, which you can check out on uh, Instagram, by the way. And I have updated it. I added a book. Um, to it, which I'm very eager to read, and I may start reading it while I'm reading the current book I'm reading right now. So, um, anyway, getting on with the review. Uh, the Haunted Hill House is a gothic horror, psychological horror story. It was published in 1959, and this is the book that really made Shirley Jackson famous. I mean, she was known for other writings, but this is really what put her name on the map. And this is her most popular novel, and probably her second most popular novel would be We've Always Lived in the Castle, which I have, but I have not read yet, but I do plan on reading at some point. I'm kind of eager to pry that one open, but I've got other readings for now. So Jackson was inspired to write this novel after reading about a real-life um, paranormal investigation from the 1800s, I think. She was really dissatisfied with it because it was rather dry and stuff, and so she wanted to write um, her own ghost story that was more interesting than, you know, their findings and and stuff. So, but Shirley Jackson, you know, found that she definitely need to believe, you know, you need to write in what you believe in. If you are writing a ghost story, it's best that you believe in ghosts, and she does or did believe in ghosts, as do I. Now, if you don't, that's perfectly fine, and that I do is perfectly fine, too. Everybody has their own beliefs. Um, so, anyway. The story is about a group of people who are selected by Dr. John uh, Montague, who is interested in the paranormal, and invites uh, this group of people to a haunted house he has rented for the summer. The guests are Eleanor Nell Vance, who is an introverted woman, and she used to care for her disabled mother until her death, but now lives with her mother, and her, her sorry, not living with her mother, I just, sorry. She lives with her controlling sister and brother-in-law. 
Um, the second guest is Theodora, or Theo, who is an artist, and it seems that she may be a lesbian. It's kind of hinted at that, but it's never outrightly said. So, I mean, I read her as that, and um, if you don't, that's fine, but I kind of read the character as one. I don't know if Shirley Jackson was intending her to be or not, but I guess it's up for interpretation. Um, and Luke Sanderson, who is the nephew of the house's owner. Now, two of these characters have had psychic or paranormal um, experiences in their life. Um, Theo has been tested by um, psychic researchers, and she was able to identify. I don't know what it's called when you identify. You know what's behind the card, and you can't see. You just see the back of the card, and you have to like name the shapes. And Eleanor experienced something with her sister when they were children, with stones falling down from the sky, which kind of reminds me of the book Carrie by Stephen King. <clears throat> so, the house, Hill House has a bizarre and unfortunate history, um, which pretty much started from the day it was completed and uh, the Crane family who owned it originally um, moved in. I'm not going to talk about the history, but I mean, because it's, it's kind of a long story, which the character of Dr. Montague does tell the, the other characters. Um... And so it's kind of a long and sordid um, history that, you know, is tragic and then turns, you know, kind of vengeful and frightening. And so uh, there's a housekeeper and her caretaker husband, the Dudleys, who see to the house's upkeep. But they are um, kind of surly and strict to their um, duties like. Um, Mrs. Dudley, she has a tendency, you know, she comes in to clear the table at a certain time, and they, and her and her husband won't stay till after dark. Her husband tries to keep Eleanor from coming into the house, or onto the grounds at all, and he tries to talk her out of it. Very much kind of like the people in town that they don't like strangers and stuff, and visitors and tourists. And not to mention, there's the whole thing, there's that famous speech that Mrs. Dudley has about, you know, you know, that they leave out, she leaves after dark, she never stays that late, and, um, nobody lives any closer than town, and nobody will come any nearer than that, and they won't be able to hear you, if, even if you scream in the dark, and she repeats it at least kind of twice in a way, and, um, it's in the movie, too, and it's just great. I love that part. Um, I'm trying to keep some of my uh, synopsis rather vague, because you really should just check out the book altogether. So from the, from the very first night onward, the group does experience some very bizarre happenings. Some experience, uh, some... Other things are experienced just by one person or a few of them, and later all of them all together. Like, there's this one really frightening scene with Nell and Theo when they're in Theo's room. And um, I'll talk about it a little more when I talk about the movie. But um, that part is, you know, really kind of spine tingling, and I found it kind of very creepy. And in the movie, I think it's done very well, and it's very kind of scary, so. So, by the time that Dr. Montague's wife, which is later in the book, and a secretary arrive, the hauntings have escalated and begin to prey on their minds. So, that's all I'm going to tell you about the book. So, you get, really should check it out. And it's very, um, it's very different than a lot of books I've read. And it's very creepy and bizarre and at times even frightening. So, check out The Haunting of the Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Next, I'm going to briefly talk about the movies. So, there are two film adaptations, the 1963 version and a 1999 version. And there is a Netflix series, which I have started watching but haven't finished. So I'm not going to really talk about that. I may do a video about, on that later, after I finish it. But the 1963 version stars Julie Harris, uh, Claire Bloom, 
Russ Tamblin, and Richard jo uh, Richard Johnson. The uh, the film adaptation is very good. It's um, fairly faithful to it, but there are some differences, and especially that one scene I think is very frightening. The first time I ever saw this, I was like in high school or middle school, and I was watching it on VHS because we still had a VHS player at the time. We had DVD at that time too, but we still um, had VHS too. And I was watching it early in the morning before I went to school, and it got to that one part, and I was kind of freaked out by that. I might have been in middle school, and I found that part really frightening. If you know the scene I'm talking about, if you don't, check out the movie. It's also done in the 1999 version, but it's done far better here in the 1963 film. By the way, it is directed by Robert Weiss. Um, so, the differences in the film are that the, the history of the house is abbreviated. They cut out some of the stuff and some of the characters from the history. Um, we see the house like the first thing. Instead of draw kind of instead of building up that suspense of what the house looks like we're showing the house outright and of course we're given the history right away instead of it being delayed like it is in the book dr montague's name has been changed to markway um and the scenes with the doctor's wife are very different later in the film and his wife is a skeptic instead of a fellow paranormal investigator herself. Which in the book she's really annoying. In the movie I think she's less so. But anyway. Um, there's hint of a romance between Nell and Markway. Which is not in the book at all. And Theo is more outrightly portrayed as a lesbian. And I feel like she's more annoyed with um, Luke in the movie than she is in the book and also i think that the brother-in-law to nell is more sympathetic in the movie than he is in the book in the book he's like an outright jerk in the movie he is kinder to her than her sister is in the book it's less so so but anyway i would check out the movie it's very good it's only an hour and 42 minutes no i'm sorry 52 minutes it's an hour and 52 minutes, almost two hours, but it's very good. It's very well made, and it's classic black and white. And, I mean, it's very atmospheric. I think it's a very good adaptation. It does go off of um, the book a little bit, but all in all, it's worth checking out. Now, I don't have the 1999 version anymore. I used to have it on VHS. And it starred Catherine Zeta-Jones, Liam Neeson, Lily Taylor, and Owen Wilson. Which I did like Catherine Zeta-Jones in the role of Theo. She made Theo um, a little more fashionable. The film is, um, which I think she was supposed to be in the book, and I suppose she is in the, in the original movie, but... The movie is more, its horror is more straightforward. It's not, not as psychological as the book and the previous film. Um, Hugh Crane is viewed more as a villainous spirit and it has to do with him keeping uh, children, excuse me, and torturing them and using them as a late, um, child labor in his uh, cotton mills. The history for the house is different. Um, Montague is renamed again instead of Dr. John Markway like he is in the 1963 version. He is now Dr. David uh, Morrow. Um, also, the whole backstory with Nell is a little different. She is now... Um, facing homelessness, and she did care for her mother, but um, she's facing homelessness because she's basically being kicked out from her home by her sister and her brother-in-law because they're trying to sell it and stuff. And she's also suffering from insomnia. And Dr. Morrow uh, kind of claims that he's doing a sleep study when all in reality he's actually doing a study on fear, and he doesn't believe the house is haunted. But... 
anyway. Uh, I don't think it's a great adaptation. It's probably worth looking at for some of the special effects and stuff, and, I mean, you may like it. I didn't personally care too much for it. It's okay. But, um, you know, check it out. And, you know, it, it's not a terrible film. It's just not wonderful compared to the 1963 version, which I think is far superior, and so... But that's just my opinion, so, you know, still check it out. And also check out the Netflix series, which is very good. I haven't finished it, like I said, but it's very good. And uh, that's pretty much all I have for you for today. So, you know, please check out the pre-order and pre-order your copy today of Local Haunts. Um, it was great to be a part of, and I'm so glad that I uh, got notified about, you know, submitting some work into it and I can't wait to delve into it and read the other fantastic stories from the other writers and other booktubers and um yeah so you know check that out and please remember to social distance and wear your mask and remember you know respect each other and be kind black lives matter and you know show that they matter show your support and that's all I have for you today so this video was supposed to be a little shorter, but that's okay. So, have a good day, and bye-bye.